Welcome back, everybody, to Crusader Kings 3 as we continue our march toward the end of the timeline and we move this over to Europa Universalis 4. And I will show you a video uh, when we start the EU 4 series on how to do that, how to transfer this realm into that one to continue the game. But for now, uh, we've retaken Britannia, uh, which was usurped from us in the last episode. Uh, they destroyed a bunch of kingdoms and duchies, which we will now have to recreate. Now, these things all cost to do that, so uh, I'm going to have to spend a lot of gold in order to recreate these titles. I may not be able to do it all at once. We're going to at least create the kingdoms of Wales, Scotland, and England, which I will now hold. So that helps consolidate those titles a little bit, which is a nice thing, at least for now. Um, but I think that's about all we're going to do for the time being. Here's what the realm looks like at the moment. We hold all of Britannia. We've still got Brittany over here. Uh, we've got a little bit of land. Sicily down here. Uh, what is this? Capua. We've got some land here. I'd really like to get Thessalonica back before this is all done. That may be the last major conquest that we have before this game ends in the 1450s. All right, so my sister Christina I have imprisoned. I'm going to release her on the condition she renounce all her claims, which include claims on my empires and my kingdoms. So uh, you can see right now, England, Scotland, Brittany, Ireland, Georgia, a bunch of duchies as well. Let's go ahead and negotiate that release. That's one less threat to our crown. We've still got a bunch more cre uh, creatable titles. Farewell. We're not endorsed by our patriarch, so we got to work on that. Uh, let's work on Sway Scheme. Hopefully this is a pretty quiet episode in terms of uprisings and things of that nature. There are some factions, none of whom are particularly powerful. And oh good, my daughter, who is uh, 26 years old, has bubonic plague. So she's seen better days. You can actually see the, the buboes on her, as they call them. And she just died. She died of the plague. Hopefully that does not happen to my son, who is my only heir at this point. It's a little concerning. But he's, well, no, he's 34. So he's got two sons as well. So uh, if for some reason something would happen to him, the title would just pass to Earl Bernard uh, of Warwickshire. All right, and just like that, I died. I wonder if I, I got the plague too. I'm curious if that's what happened to me. No, it doesn't look like it. So now I continue as my son, Kaiser Werner. Oh, died under mysterious circumstances. That means I was probably murdered. Oh, boy. All right, well, for the first time in quite a while, I am a man again. I think we're going to go with stewardship. Domain focus. But now we've got a lot of things to take care of, like assigning our council. Oh, that's pretty terrible. we got to find somebody better than him. I don't know why I did that that way. Um, we got to find somebody better than that. Okay. There we go. Duke John. Thank you. Pretty good council. Patriarch's not outstanding. I actually can hold less things now than my mother could. Let's see if we can do something about that. Um, let's go to our council. Oh, she's already assisting me. Ouch. Manage domain, here we go. That gives me one more, but I'm still one more than I can actually hold. So we're going to have to pass something on to somebody else. Let's find something that doesn't have much income. Oh, like this castle right here. Let's give that one off to somebody who is actually part of our house. If there is anybody. Or some random 
Nobody. Let's do it that way. All right, so where are we at on things? Transfer something to a proper liege. That always helps. Negotiate an alliance with Prince Bernard of Britannia, my son and heir. Okay. So the main concern that I have at this point is that I've lost my alliance with the Holy Roman Empire. And he has only sons. And I have only sons, which means I can't even make a marriage alliance there. Um, my only sibling, my half-sister, died of plague, so I don't even have her available. Uh, it's a really difficult situation. I just don't have the marriages to make. So as long as we don't go to war with the Holy Roman Empire, we'll be okay. You can see they've now inherited a bunch of land down here. Uh, pretty powerful. Portugal has taken over most of the Iberian Peninsula now. Holy Roman Empire even has land down in Africa. So when we go into EU4, they are certainly going to be our main concern. I really want to be able to take Thessalonica back. They've still got Byzantium, Constantinople, which I'd like to get. But I don't think I can take them on in a war without the assistance of my good friends in the Holy Roman Empire. Now, Portugal's got a pretty decent-sized army, and he's got daughters. That might be the way to go at this point. Let's see if we can arrange a marriage with the king of, Cor of Portugal. My son and heir is six. Yeah, let's do that. That's an alliance that might help, especially since we've got factions forming against me since I've just taken control. There's always these factions that rise up when you first inherit power. Let's go ahead and take a look at those real quick. Mainly concerned with the military power. So here we go right here. Uh, this one wants... Oh man. Wants the Byzantine Empire. Not okay. How can we go about reducing that power? There's 15 members in that one. Yeah, it's going to be fun if it comes to it. In three months, they're going to send an ultimatum. All right, in anticipation of what I know is about to be a revolt against my reign, uh, I'm going to start raising the army now in southern England. They're... Military power in comparison to mine just went up to 193. They must have added somebody new uh, who was quite powerful. I don't know why it went up from 120 to 193. Unless my military power actually went down for some reason. Let's take a look and see. No, it didn't. We're def definitely going to have to call our allies, though, when the time comes. But we need to merge everybody into one big army and get ready to start putting this rebellion down. To the heroic Kaiser Werner, your striking beauty is the rock I cling to in stormy seas. I would be blessed if I could feel your lips touch mine. That I may know the warmth of your embrace. Please be the Cleopatra to my Marcus Antonius. <laughs> oh my gosh. That didn't end well for those two, if you recall. These lines are but a bleak reflection of my feelings for you. I will do anything to prove my loyal affections. Um, you flatter me, lady. I'm going to end that scheme right now, though. Sorry. Not interested. They can't move until they've completely raised their force, so it's taking a little bit of time. Uh, we've got about six or seven years we can keep this army raised. The right to rule the Byzantine Empire belongs to Leofuaru. By divine right, here we go. Uh, I will not be threatened. Bring it on. Okay. So first things first. Overall force, they've got 96,000 men to my 46,000. That is a major, major problem. Certain people I will not be able to call to this war, but I will call everyone that I can. 
Really going to miss that Holy Roman Empire as an ally right now. Going to have to do this one pretty much on my own. All right, first things first. Here comes Portugal, so that helps a lot. The Knights Hospitalier, that's going to help a lot too. Uh, we're up to 80,000 men now. First things first, we're going to hit this army in the Duchy of Kent. Hopefully we can hit some of these bigger forces before they have a chance to, to merge into a massive force. Ugh. Okay, so there's a victory. We killed 6,000 men. That certainly helps, including one of his knights. We've got the Duke of Kent imprisoned. What can we do about this? Oh, what did I just do? I didn't let him go, did I? All right, so he left the war. He, uh, and We're going to negotiate a release with him. I guess we could gain a weak hook. Get him to renounce claims. Where does that put us now? Now we've got eighty, almost eighty-two thousand. He's got eighty-six thousand. Things are pretty even. But the bottom line here is going to come down to being able to get my allies to coordinate our attacks. All right, the army of Hastings, fifty thousand strong. Let's head over there and try to destroy these armies before he can link up with other men. And he's running because he knows it. Here comes another 14,000. That's going to give him a pretty significant force, but still one I should be able to take. Don't get Oh, darn it. Don't let him get away. I really need to hit this army before he can add more troops to it. Oh, my son and heir, Bernard, has fallen ill with typhus. Thankfully, we do have a spare. But that's still not an ideal situation because that would leave me with just one heir. And this is going to be a major fight to the death here. So far, not looking real good. The advantage is heavily in the enemy's favor, and that is moving the casualty figure perilously close to catastrophe. In fact, I am going to lose this battle. Darn it. Oh, sure, now. Here come the Portuguese. Just when I don't need them anymore. But at least they're going to hit this army in time to maybe make a difference. We actually might win this now. But boy, major casualties. Still, a victory's a victory. Albeit a very costly one. Wow, what a fight. What a fight that was. Good night. Can't wait to see the deaths on this one. 20,000 dead on our side. 13,000 dead on his side. Oh. That leaves us with now just 58,000 men to his 71,000. Good night, that was brutal. Good news, my son and heir Bernard has recovered from typhus. Jesus be praised, good news. Whose army is this? That's a hostile army. As soon as this is done, we go after him. Hit them. Hit them before they can get away. Got him. We caught him before he could get to the next territory. Those are the kinds of victories we're going to need to win. Where we lose 178 men, we kill 6,000 of the enemy. We're going to need many more like that because he's down to 68,000. We're up to 62 now. All right, things are looking up, but boy, this is so costly right now. And there's another faction to install the... Count, oh my gosh. And we're going to be in real trouble if that happens. 
There's absolutely no way that we can take on another major force like this. Unless most of these are the same, but see, they're not. These are all going to be a different group of people wanting to fight me. Oh. So they want the Byzantine Empire. That's the Duke of Kent. That's the same guy we just captured. Ugh. Okay. Let's do this. Similar numbers. We're going to have to call everybody to that war too. At least some of them are the same people. So it may not be as bad as it looks. So we're going to have to call all these people to that war too. This thing just got a whole lot more complicated. I really need another ally somewhere. You know, like the Holy Roman Empire, for example. But I just, there's no way. He doesn't have any siblings I can marry someone to or anything. All right. Just got to keep the strategy going. Uh, War against the tyranny of Kaiser Werner has ended. It's no longer valid to continue. Interesting. A secret exposed. So that war is over. Awesome. That is fantastic news. We're back to just the one war. So I guess the person who had the claim must have died or something. So now we're back to just going after this one army, which we now have even odds with at the moment. Let's try to hunt down the enemy, wherever he may be. He's running away at the moment. So we're just going to lay siege to his territories. Let's go up here to York. Another faction created against me. Where's that one stand? And none of them have any significant amount of power. This is the only one right here. One of my family members. I don't think we can inherit or we can uh, imprison her. The Duke of Kent. It's always the freaking Duke of Kent. You, sir. I can use a hook to try and do this. Might accept. Nah, it's not enough. Yeah, I guess there's not much I can do about it at the moment. There's a fight going on down here in Aylesbury. Looks like it went pretty well. We fa we captured the son of uh, Duke Ruardri. So that's a nice prisoner to have. We're still only at 16% on this war, though. We've got a long way to go. We've got to find the, the enemy army. I think he's pretty well fled the continent. He's gone somewhere else to try and take territory. I just don't know where. Probably down here. Oh, there's where he is. He's laying claim, trying to take my territories all the way down in Capua. Have at it, dude. I'm just going to conquer all your territory up here in the meantime. All right, we can unlock Toe the Line, which makes my vassals less likely to join independence factions. So hopefully that's going to help a little bit. Uh, we'll see if that has any immediate impact or if it doesn't really affect the ones that have already joined. Looks like it did. I mean, they're down to 91% of our military power now, but they are going to probably declare that one pretty soon. Here it is. Um, no, I'm not going to be threatened. Rally the troops. It's not as big a force, and they may, a lot of them, actually be in the previous armies that are already at war with me. So once again, we just got to call everybody into the fight. Okay, so it looks like an enemy army has returned. This might be a chance to push this thing toward an end. We're at 57% on war score. And a major part of the reason we haven't won yet is because of those territories he took down in Italy. I'm just not going to march my army all the way down there. 
when there's things I can do here to end it. So let's go up here and hit, hit, hit these forces. A lot of attrition happening with the armies at this point. But we've certainly got enough to finish him off. I don't know why he's getting such an... Oh, it's because of all the knights. He's got 22 knights in that army. That's why he fights so well. Okay, there's a victory. We killed 15,000. That certainly helps. But those knights are just brutal. Look at the knights. 151 killed, 105 killed, 92 killed. It's hard to compete with that. But now we're at still even numbers in that war. The other war, which is going pretty well, he doesn't have nearly the manpower. All right, the Battle of Hastings. Hopefully we can start capturing some of these nobles that are fighting against me. Killed another 5,000 there. We killed his most powerful knight that was in that particular fight. Alright, he's down to 56,000 men. This other war is going pretty well because it's against largely the same people. Alright, it looks like his main armies are marching through my territory down here. Uh, so, it's really just a an issue of the armies avoiding each other. So we're just going to have to keep conquering territory and hope we can conquer territory faster than he can and end the war that way. And here comes another claimant for the Byzantine Empire. So once again, we've got to rally the troops. And now we have three separate fights going on against claimants to my empires. And I just can't seem to win any one of them. Because we're basically fighting on two completely different fronts. And we're just kind of keeping up with each other. As I conquer territory in Britannia, he's conquering territory down in the Byzantine Empire. And it just keeps overlapping. Let's see how many men. He's got 40,000. Alright, another fight. This time in northern Wales. be great if I could capture Duke John of the Isles. But it's not happening. We're at 84% on this one war, so that's good. I don't think we're quite at the place where we can enforce those demands. We need a new chancellor. No, not you. What was I thinking there? Here we go. All right, here's some seriously good news. My cousin, Princess Aelthswith, Rachel's daughter of the Holy Roman Empire. It looks like the Holy Roman Emperor has had a daughter. Oh, that's good news. Oh, he won't accept? Oh, because of the risk of being inbred. Ah. Uh, darn it. That's the problem. We're related to each other. My aunt is... Uh, it would be first cousins. Not even if we do matrilineal. What do we got to change? Oh, he does not want an alliance. That's the main problem. Otherwise, it probably would be acceptable. All right. Okay, next best thing we can do is look for an arrangement with Poland. So we've got an alliance formed with the king of Poland. He's got... Almost 30,000 men. We're going to call him to all of these wars, but primarily, actually, Leofwaru is the one I'm worried about the most. So let's start there. And we'll work our way from that war to the others. Okay, I have reconstituted my army in Asia Minor. We've got 20,000 troops from Poland on the way to join us. Let's see if we can turn things around. I'm going to head toward these armies here. Oh my gosh. 
I just got excommunicated. Yeah, that's a problem. There's 30,000 troops here now from Poland. I think. Yeah, maybe it's only 20. No, it looks like 30. No, don't go there. Come up here and help me fight, please. They're not coming. Oh, boy. I'm going to get myself into a fight I can't win because the Polish aren't coming to help me. And these guys are going to start pushing down. Well, maybe I'll be okay. Here comes a big showdown. Maybe. Alright, we just fought a major battle in Thyatira. 4,000 lost. We killed 25,000. That's a major slaughter and it might be a turning point in this conflict. Of course, things aren't looking real good in a lot of these wars, but if you look at the numbers, the enemy's down to just 20,000 men at this point. So really, it's just a matter of winning each of these wars. We've got to find what's causing the war score to be what it is, where the occupied counties are, uh, and then go unoccupy them, and then win this thing. All right, one of the wars is over because we uh, invalidated it. We're taking Nikea, which is going to help push this one to near completion. We'll see where we are. We're at 87% now. Oh, and just then, we have another claim on the Byzantine Empire. This is just ridiculous. It just never stops. It's one claim after another. And we find ourselves having to constantly call all of our allies into these wars. At any given point for the last 30, 40 years, we have had just multiple wars going on at any given time trying to defend our can our lands so where does that put this one we've still got the numbers this one i'm a little concerned about just because we're losing the war i need to hurry up and win this one so we can win the others uh Ce cephalonia no N nicpolis 15 percent that's kind of the main one we need to deal with right now so let's go look for that and then we'll kind of go from there. Okay, just as my son comes of age, we finally won this war. All right, and before anything else happens, we've got to hurry up and quick uh, turn on Georgia's claims on the Byzantine Empire because that one's not going well. But uh, we've got a lot we've got to do first, like handle my son's marriage. Get a new perk. Uh, we're almost out of money, which is a major, major problem. We're down to 200 in income. That is certainly not enough to get this done. This war, 96,000 versus 30,000. So uh, in theory, at least, now that this war's over, maybe my allies will go fight elsewhere. We're going to start calling everybody to these other wars. We're probably going to have to, uh, at least for the time being disband my army and then we're going to have to look for ways to make money with all of these 30 people that I have currently in prison but I've got to start by taking away some titles okay my wife has died that might not be the worst news ever she was quite a bit older than me I'm 44 now I've got a chance to make an alliance with a new marriage. How about I marry my cousin of the Holy Roman Empire? She's only seven. He will accept that. Holy Roman Empire back in the alliance column. Fantastic news. And we are definitely going to call him to this war with Georgia, but also to the other one. Actually, I think we'll call them to the first war because that one's the one we're in danger of losing. 
All right, time to put down this war. They're running. I've noticed that I can't get the enemy army or my allied armies to help me fight to regain this territory until I myself go after the territory. So now that I'm doing that, we're seeing the Portuguese, for example, come to our aid. Oh, I've got chronic headaches for 10 years. Awesome. Yeah, everybody's coming to help out now. So we'll quickly turn this one around. It went from being almost a 70% defeat to being in the winning column. However, I am now in debt, so that's a major, major problem. We're going to have to disband some of my armies. As long as I keep something over here to fight with, I'll be okay. Because my allies will follow. Alright, well, in the midst of all of these wars, which right now we have a bunch of peasant uprisings to deal with, I may have actually had a child with another woman, my vassal and soulmate, Mayor Christine. Uh, yeah, we'll acknowledge the child. I've gained the trait Forticator, which, who cares, I'm already excommunicated anyway. All right, let's take a look at my children. Here he is here. I've gotten an heir, so that's not a huge deal, really. I am betrothed to a 12-year-old at the moment. We do have some perks available, so let's go ahead and get those going. All right, we've captured the Duke of Lancaster. We're going to revoke his title and give it to somebody else more deserving. actually have some more duchies that could be created as well but right now that's kind of the main concern and we'll give with that the lordship of Westmoreland oh, maybe not all right who in my family can I give these things to how about my bastard son we're gonna make him Duke of Lancaster. Okay, some good news. We finally won the war against George's claim. So now we've got some more people to deal with. We've still got a bunch of people in prison, so I just haven't been able to keep up with this because I've been fighting so many stinking wars. We've got a bunch of earls right now that we've got to revoke titles from. Oh, that guy's not my direct vassal, so I can't with him. Here we can. So I'll work on that a little bit. Okay, so I realized that the Crusader Kings 3 to Europa Universalis 4 converter actually allows you to start in EU4 on the date of 1444, November of 1444. So we're already actually past that. So we're going to go ahead and do the conversion now with our empire as it exists. And I just want to show you real quick how this works. Uh, so you download the converter and you can do that directly from uh, GitHub or if you uh, subscribe to it on Steam, it's the same way. You have to go in and, and unzip the file and then open the converter. Once you open the converter, it's going to do this. And what you have to do is you have to locate, uh, it pre-populated these ones, but you've got to locate uh, where your mod, direct, uh, your mod directory is uh, for EU4. And uh, so then once you do that, uh, I'll go ahead and do all that. Uh, locate that and then mo locate the path to the CK3 save game that you want to use. In this case, I, I saved it as final CK3. So you do those things. I'll you know, do the same with the mod directory. Uh, and then I'll show you what it does. So once you do all of that, you just go over here to convert on the tab. And then you hit convert save, which I've already done and it will convert the save. And what it does is it turns your CK3 save file into an EU4 mod. And then what you have to do is when you go into, let me go ahead and pull this up, when you go into load EU4, 
When you go into load EU4, it's going to load uh, your launcher like this, and you're going to go to your installed mods, well, in this case, playset. So my initial play playset, and you're going to see that um, converted final CK3 uh, is converted. My save game from Crusader Kings 3 is now converted into a workable mod that I have to enable, along with any other mods I might be using. In this case, I'm not. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and show you what that looks like when you actually load up the game. Okay, so here's EU4. Uh, let's go ahead and turn down the music. All right, uh, go to single player, and there you have it. There's our save game in the mod. There is Britannia. It's called Britannic Britain on here. Uh, but you can see here that I control this territory here. We've got a little bit in here. Uh, of course, we've got our territories down here. Um, Britannia. All of these are called Britannic and then whatever they are. Um, it looks like the Byzantine Empire is... Oh, you know, it is also under Emperor Vanner Greenhill. So there you have it. Emperor Vanner Greenhill continues on uh, as the ruler here. And so in a couple of days, we're going to pick up right there uh, with controlling Britannia. And we're going to take this another couple hundred years and see what happens. It's been a long time since I played EU4. Uh, so it's going to be quite fun to see how that all plays out. I'll probably do a little practicing on my own. But let me know your thoughts. Use the comment section below. And we will be back in a few days with our episode one of uh, Britannia and the Byzantine Empire merged together in EU4. Thanks for watching.